Now you played for Brad Lawing, correct? Was correct. he there? Yeah. So, and I, I've, I've been fortunate enough. I had coach Lawing uh, in studio last football season. I mean, that is a walking legend. No question. That, that dude, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I know a decent amount about football, but you talk yeah. to him, and that dude is a mad scientist when it comes to pass rush. Like I, I never He'll knew, just spout out never, more than you yeah, ever know. I never knew how much went into creating a pass rush, and you mm -hmm. talk to him, and it is a literal science, and he knows how to put guys in certain positions and twist yep. them, and matchups, and like I, I'm like, how could you not get better playing for a guy like this? Like, what was your experience like playing for Coach Long at that point? Coach Lawrence, I'll, I'll tell you this. He, Coach Lawrence one of those guys you love him or you hate him. You know, he's he's gonna be tough on you. He's gonna he's gonna yell. He's gonna scream. He's gonna cuss. Whatever. He's gonna. He, but he's gonna drill in you what he wants in you. And, and whether you receive it or not, that's up to you. I mean, there's there's guys I played with that they'll if you say his name they'll be like, oh God, I don't like that man. But at the same time, none of them can deny what he taught us. I mean, he would have you in there looking at film and he'd be like watch that guy's, you know, pinky finger on his right hand. It'll dig in the ground when he's going to move yeah. forward or, you know, he'll lean back into the left when he's going to, you know, he just give you all these little clues and keys. And, you know, he'll, if you ever ask him about joint manipulation, oh my God. Oh yeah. You know, he talked about that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so he put, had, putting he had, it right here in the side, like right. Yeah. Right, yeah. The elbows, yeah. you know, popping oh, yeah. the elbows, moving the shoulders. He, yeah. he actually brought in a uh, judo teacher. Mm. And had us take like he taught us, you know, hand movements and how to use your opponent's body weight and momentum. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people don't realize that that type, all that type stuff plays into being a defensive lineman. But he was able to put all that together, you know, and, and kind of give it to you in a way that if you picked it up, you could use that stuff. And um, I, even when I coached, I mean, a lot of what I taught my guys is what he taught me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, for sure. It, C Coach Long's a legend. Like I said, I know a lot of fans want him to come back. I'm like, I, I think he's happily retired on Lake Murray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he, he's, he's chilling out on Lake yeah. Murray. <laughs> he, he coached a lot of football. I think he's well-deserved just hanging out, chilling. So, oh, yeah. Um, oh, but, yeah. yeah, definitely a mad scientist in his own right. I, I, I want to talk to you about the coaching change that happened while you were in Columbia, obviously from Sparky mm -hmm. Woods to Brad Scott. Um I, I know, obviously, at, yeah, at that point, you were very well entrenched in Columbia and kind of made a name for yourself. But just talk about, obviously, the adjustment. Because, of course, you know, we're seeing South Carolina right now. You know, anytime there's a coaching change, there's a culture shift. There's, a, you know, and, and some guys are maybe left uncertain of what their role is yeah. in the team and, you know, how that staff's going to feel about them. But, yeah. you know, overall, Brad Scott came in and did good things. What, what was the what was the transition like for you, I guess? It was it was tough. Um the, the biggest thing for us was the fact that it wasn't your coach. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I was fortunate enough to have Coach Lawing stay over. Um, so my position coach didn't change. But, you know, you're dealing with a whole different style of leadership. I mean, he was coming from Florida State, you know, and it kind of felt like he wanted to make us Florida State South. I mean, North a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it was like FSU North. And he came in with the heavy hand and, you know, I'm going to clean this thing up and was getting rid of people. And we're over here like, oh, coach, wait a minute. You can't get rid of everybody. We don't have that depth of talent like that. Mm. You know, and then you had, you know, like you said, those guys that kind of felt like they got left behind or whatever and, you know, didn't play much. Um, you know, I had situations where I would be on the field. If we played 70 defensive snaps, I played 50 of them. Mm. You know, just because the guy behind me, they really, you know, might have had some issues with or, right. you know, political things or didn't like him as much or whatever the case might be. It wasn't because he couldn't play mm -hmm. because he could, you know, so we had these signals, you know, I look at him, he look at me and I wave my hand and I rock the field. And he run on and there's nothing they could do about it, you know, but it was those type things that that you find you, you get a little bit of favoritism. Like everybody talks about the Will Muschamp and now it seemed like he played favorite guys. Well, that happens in a coaching change. Yeah. So when he came in, yeah, of course, you get your guys and you bring them in and you want to play your guys and, and you kind of lose sight of doing things that's best for the team. And this guy over here, you know, he's not my guy, but he might be the best guy to play right now. Mm -hmm. And so instead of doing that, you use your guy that you brought in that you proper. So mm -hmm. those are things going through a coaching change that kind of make it hard to, you know, I would say grasp it and excel, I guess. Mm -hmm.